Nice. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? I'm Dan H. And today on the project, we're going to be installing this oil catch can and this 5.7 Hemi Commander. Uh, we're also going to be changing the oil. So uh, let's get started. All right, guys. So I got myself an oil catch can on Amazon. Uh, it was about $105 ish. Um, I'll put the link in the description as usual. And here we have it. It's a nice billet catch can. It's got this uh, Z bracket made for the 5.7 Hemis. Um, the only problem is, I think this was designed for the Dodges, and uh, we have a, a resonator box that is probably gonna be in the way. I don't know if it's gonna fit exactly, and we might have to modify it. But uh, this is the closest thing I could find to a fit, or a perfect fit. And here are all the parts it came with. So that's pretty cool. We got our hoses. All right, let's take a closer look at this catch can. We're gonna unscrew the basin and we're gonna see what we got here. All right, we got a bunch of little uh, mesh in here, metal mesh filter we got in here. So what's gonna happen is the air that's coming out of the engine is gonna have all uh, oil mixture from blow by. It's gonna have the oil mixture. It's gonna have water condensation. It's gonna come in through here. It's gonna drop down into this basin it's going to catch all that mixture it's going to condense that water it's going to catch that oil and then the clean air is going to go up through this part and then out here uh, the air is going to get filtered by all this stuff and then it should be coming out clean back into your intake and this will clean your or keep your valves clean and uh, it'll get all that crap that accumulates in here um, out of your valves that'll prevent it from gumming up your stuff and uh, it's good to have a nice clean running engine you want to keep all that clean and um, I've always been curious to see exactly how much oil this can catch so I'm gonna pour this in here I guess uh, I guess you wouldn't want it going past <laughs> past this uh, exit port so this is probably all it can hold in all honesty so let's go and pour this in here and this is straight up a new motor oil guys this will be similar to what we're actually pulling out um and right here we have uh we have the ounces side and it's going right down here to about four ounces guys i don't know can you see that so this can can effectively catch four ounces of junk so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna change the oil and we're gonna put this in and we're gonna check it periodically to see how many miles <laughs> ounces per mile <laughs> miles per ounces uh this way we'll know how often we have to check it and empty it and I broke this thing down one step further and discovered you could swap the inlet and the outlet side. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's get to changing that oil. All right, guys, and just to let you know, this is the oil that we're using for our 5.7 Hemi. Um, it is uh, 5W20. This is what the engine requires. It has the MDS system. Uh, I know a lot of people like to go to a thicker weight um, for different types of seasons, different times of the year, but... For the MDS system, it requires 5W20. Do not change this, you will mess up your engine. So we got that. Uh, I also got this oil on um, Amazon. I got two of these for a great deal. Uh, but the oil filter, I'm using the Mopar uh, 899. What is this? Can't read the part number. I don't know. We got the 5.7 Hemi Mopar oil filter. And I got a air filter too while I'm at it. I got this stuff at uh, Advanced Auto because I got a good deal on that. You buy it online ahead of time, you use your 25% discount, and you go pick it up much cheaper. All right, now we're going to get started. There we go. There she be. Got a 5.7 Hemi. Here we got the oil cap. And right here, 5W20. Always want to make sure you take off the oil cap first before you drain the oil because God forbid this is seized on, <laughs> you won't be able to refill your oil if <laughs> you drain it and can't get this off. So, oops, I dropped it. <laughs> Gotta keep that right up here for now. And we're coming down here. 
under the commander. And I think this is 13 millimeter. Fits on. Going to need a breaker bar. This is on tight. Yahoo. All right. All right, here we go. We got a 13 millimeter and we're gonna loosen this up. Um, this is right here, this is the uh, skid plate. We're gonna leave it on. We can access it with it still being on the vehicle. So, go ahead and, there we go. Broke it with the breaker bar. Not literally break it, just broke the tension. <laughs> there we go. Come on, oil. Actually not bad. It's only been like 3,200 miles since the last oil change, so we're doing pretty good keeping this Commander nice and clean. And we'll give it a crack. Not too tight, not too loose. Cool, good. All right. And we got this uh, oil filter. It's like behind a bunch of stuff right up there. It's got this neat little, little water slide or oil slide that usually the oil just drips out and you can catch it right from there. So I pre-loosen this one-handed off camera because I know it's gonna be really hard to get to this while holding a camera. So, all right, maybe I didn't loosen it that much. <laughs> all right, come on. There we go. All right. Oh, I missed. Crap. <laughs> Shoot. It's unpredictable, especially with the wind. It's like spitting in the wind. What do you want? What are you doing? And we'll let that drip for like an hour. <laughs> All right, guys, here is the old oil filter. It was a uh, perlator and uh, I guess it was part number TL22500 or V2500. Um, here is the oil filter I'm putting in. Um, it's a MO, MO899, uh, Mopar899. Uh, this says uh, 4884899AC. And <laughs> look at the difference. This thing is huge. I mean, the gaskets line up about the same part, but a little stubbier. It's much fatter. Nice. Short. But it fills again. We're going Mopar, baby. So, before we install this one, I'm gonna go ahead and get a nice dab of fresh oil and wipe it around the gasket. This will lubricate the gasket, be able to get on nice and snug, and it'll help you get it off when it's time to change this out again. So, all right, this is going back on. And here we go. Got the camera way up in there. Ugh. Let's see if I could do this one-handed while filming. It's always an adventure under a car <laughs> with you guys. Uh, it's so slippery. <laughs> My hands are full of oil. Shoot her! Try to shoot her! I gotta put you down so I could use my strength and get this on a little better. <laughs> there we go. Got my strength right there. <laughs> In the fetal position, I'm the strongest. <laughs> well, it's on. <sighs> Alright, so we got our drain plug back on. We got our new oil filter in. And now we'll put in our first four and a half quarts. <laughs>
Don't forget to dispose of your oil in a responsible manner. Ugh. Not that I'm a great example of responsibility. <laughs> At least I've learned to use something to catch my spillages. All right, so we got the oil in. Now we will put in the catch can. And uh, yeah, I always figured it was a good idea to put in the catch can when you do an oil change, just so you have a good uh, zero mark. You can zero out your uh, odometer, your tripometer, and then you could better gauge how much oil you're uh, using or losing when you check it. So let me go ahead and separate this air box from the resonator. Nope, air box. Old air filter. Eh, not too bad. Let's pop this off. Mine is a 10 millimeter. It doesn't look like the OEM bolt, but taking that off there. And we got some more hose clamps right over here. Resonator is off. Now we have a, I think it's a mass air sensor or a air temperature sensor. You gotta unplug. Don't forget to plug that back in. All right, guys, so I got everything out of the way now. Now we got to try to find a good place to mount it. Um, the recommended place to mount it is uh, in one of these two holes over here. I don't know if you can see it. We got some threaded holes. Um, I think they're supposed to go, sorry for the light, um, right here on this front bottom hole. You're going to bolt in the uh, catch can right there, and it says to uh, plumb up this... Uh, PCV line up to the catch can. So yeah, uh, let's go see if we could get a test fit in there. All right guys, so for most Dodge engines, the recommended spot to install this catch can is in this threaded hole right over here on this side of the uh, the head over here. Um, it It's not gonna fit in the Commander if I put it over here uh, because this bracket makes a catch can, it would go right into this AC line. Also, when you plug everything up, it's gonna be in the way of this uh, resonator box and my my intake, my air intake. So um, I was able to clean out the threads up here. If you can see this a little better. Uh, I'm gonna use this threaded spot on the head, but the only problem with that is um, this, wow, that's nice and bright is a little too high it rides up it rides up too high so i'm going to try to wallow out this hole it's only aluminum so it shouldn't be too bad this way i'll be able to slide it down a little bit more it'll be out of the way i think it's a good spot if i could just get like about an eighth of an inch clearance um, also another issue i had was the clearance between the head and the alternator for the hemi uh, this is the bolt they give you now they got a lot of meat for this collar and I kind of don't need all that and the threads well there's not enough threads so what I did was I found another this is a M8 by 125 pitch uh, 1.25 so I went ahead and I chopped this um, I'll measure that in a second <laughs> but I cut that down so now I'm able to let's see now I'm able to get this bolt right in here without banging on the alternator bracket. So that'll be going right into there in this spot. And we just gotta bring this bracket down a little bit smaller. Yeah, there we go. I was able to cut this bolt down to about an inch and a quarter, and that's gonna work out just fine. <laughs> I hope, knock on wood, or wood. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so this existing hole is about 5 16 in diameter. I'm gonna go for, uh, what is this, a 3 8 uh, drill bit. And while I'm going in, I'm gonna try to work it up so this whole bracket sits down a little bit. All right, hope it works. Oh, like butter. That was real time. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I didn't fast forward anything. Oh man. All right, I'm gonna see if I could pull it up a little bit. Wallow it out. All right, not too bad. Now it's a little bigger, it can accept my rat tail file. Yeah, there we go. Right, let's take a look at that. There we go. We got a nice wallowed out oval hole. Hopefully this will give me the clearance I need. All right, guys, so I was almost ready to put this in, and I felt it had a little play in here. So deep down inside is a four millimeter Allen bolt. So I'm gonna go take this out, and I think I'm gonna apply a little dab of Loctite on it. There we go. Grab the Loctite. And I'm gonna get a little dab of blue, nothing crazy. Just don't want it to uh, wiggle, wiggle loose on me while, uh, while we're driving, you know. I'm gonna keep this solid and in place, and we'll never have to move this again. So, make sure this is lined up the right way, and I gotta torque it down. There we go. Nice and solid. Beautiful. All right, now we'll install it. All right, so I got my wallet out hole. I got my cut down bolt about an inch and a quarter. And I also got a lock washer and regular washer on it. Um, this kit does include a collar. It's a nice spacer for it. But uh, again, this is not going to fit the, um, the Commander Hemis. So... That's why we got our custom gig going on. So let me uh, get this in there. There we go. There we go. It's going. What a tight fit. Man. And uh, that's where it's sitting right now. So let's go ahead and see if we could get this can on. All right, we got this right where we need it. Double check this uh, resonator. Slide it on. And beautiful. We got clearance. Nice. Right down under there. We can see. Tiny little catch can. Alright, so let's plumb this up now. We just gotta put in the hoses that connect the PCV valve to the catch can. Alright guys, I'm trying to fish these hoses they gave us to the PCV valve. And, um, well, they're just not quite long enough. Uh, again, this wasn't a setup for the commander, so I'm trying to uh, improvise. Um, this this piece of hose, I'm gonna stretch to this barb of the uh, the PCV valve, and I'm gonna cut it right. So I'm gonna go right about here. That was an easy cut with the scissor. All right, just gonna try to connect these two pieces. There we go. It's on pretty snug. Here we go. Let's get this other side on before I get too soaked. It's uh, miserable weather out here. Um, I'm gonna slide up in this uh, this end. Here we go. Got the 90 degree on. Gonna put this on right here. And guys, when you're putting these things on, make sure it's exactly where it needs to be because, man, oh man, these things are permanent. Getting these uh, couplers on. All right. Got everything where it needs to be. 
So, uh, gotta put everything back together. All right, guys, we've got a catch can mounted. It's plumbed up. Time to get this thing back together. It is cold, it is rainy, I'm soaking wet, and it's been a long day. So first thing I'm gonna do before I forget is plug in this air sensor. Here we go, got that. Check, make sure all these hoses are plugged in. Check, gotta find the mounting bracket. I think I did. Check, I'm gonna slide this resonator box on. Check, cool. All right, now the screw for the resonator box. Resonator box is on. Tighten up this hose clamp. I'm just gonna wipe out the crud from the air box. It's not that dirty. Let's get all the dust off. Got our new air filter. Here we go. Lay that down. And our air box. And the last two screws for the hose clamps on the air box. There we go. Now, of course, the main event, the do not touch cover. <laughs> uh, here we go. This is just a, it's a clip on. All right, guys, when I popped this shroud on, uh, it was a little cockeyed because, well, I realized this over here was hitting my hoses. So I just took the cutoff wheel and I made a nice, uh, a nice smooth arcing cut over the shroud to get around the catch can. So there you have it. Um, when it's time to empty it, uh, I'll be able to empty it by just removing off the, uh, just taking off the air box and then I'll be able to reach down under there. So that's it, pretty cool guys. All right guys, back in the Commander. Got a fresh set of clothes on. I got a new shirt on, literally a brand new shirt. Now we are just gonna reset this uh, oil clock. We're gonna set the counter back to zero and uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on the uh, accessory mode. Not gonna start it. There we go. I'm gonna pump the gas three times and turn it off. Now when I start it again, we should not have an oil warning light. Low spare, low washer fluid, <laughs> but the oil system has been changed. All right, I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drive this a little bit, see how she feels. And then uh, I'll come back and I will check the oil again. <laughs> Alright guys, we drove over 26 miles on this new oil change, and uh, let's see, uh, got an average of about 13.9 miles per gallon since we filled up. She's a pig. <laughs> so all is right with the world. Alright, so thankfully the rain has slowed down a little bit, just enough so we can check our oil, I guess. Gotta recheck it, make sure our level is where we need it to be. It's always good to check your oil. The oil is very important to the life of the engine. Don't want to have too much. You don't want to have too little. So uh, here we go. Pull the dipstick up once, clean it off. Now we're gonna pull it out again. This is a very twisted dipstick. So here we go. We are right in the middle of the safe line. Can we see that over here? Whoa. Safe. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on wide angle. You get the point. <laughs> All right. So, yes, we want to keep our oil right where it needs to be in the safe line. Uh, want to last. We want to keep this 
Jeep lasting as long as it can. This Jeep has been a blessing for me and my family. If you guys haven't seen how we acquired this Jeep, uh, go check it out. I'll leave the uh, link in the end of the video, the end screen credits. Uh, it was an interesting story. We had a good adventure. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it for this thing. We're going to check the oil at 500 miles, and uh, I think we'll check the catch can at 500 miles too, uh, just to see how it's accumulating. Cool. All right, guys, that's a wrap from our oil change and my oil catch can install video for this 2010 Jeep Commander with the 5.7 liter Hemi in it. Not too much information out there on how to get a catch can into a Commander with a Hemi, so I did my own thing. I uh, utilized a UPR catch can made specifically for a 2009 to 2017 Dodge Ram with the Hemi. And uh, same engine, different components, so we had to modify the mounting bracket a little bit. Um, we wallowed out that hole nice and deep. We used a file to make a nice over so the bracket could slide down a little deeper in there and uh, it fits pretty nice. We also cut that bolt in half so we could get the bolt past that alternator and did a pretty good job. I'm very happy with the way it came out. Um, come to think of it, if we remove that resonator box entirely and replace it with a cold air intake, it might fit without any mods whatsoever. So that could be another video down the road. Um, the plumbing. I'm not too thrilled about the way I plumbed it. Um, I might have to get new hoses. I might redo it uh, down the line, but I do need to do a follow-up video because I have to check on the progress of the catch can. Uh, we got to see how many ounces per mile it accumulates in the catch can. I uh, want to make sure the blow-by is caught and it's not circulating back into the engine. So we will get back in there. We'll do a follow-up video and uh, we'll make sure that it's working properly. And again, if this thing works properly, we shouldn't have any blow-by, any of that nasty uh, oily water mixture going back into the intake. We'll keep our valves clean. We'll keep our spark plugs clean. And then uh, we'll prolong the life of this engine. That's the whole idea. I want to keep this thing running good. So I'm very happy with it. If you commander guys out there want to get a catch can and one of these things with a Hemi, feel free to use my mods. I'll leave the link in the description below on uh, how to get this one that I got from Amazon. I'll put everything in the link, so don't worry about that, guys. And uh, yeah, I got to get out of the rain. I've been rained on all day in this video. Um, <laughs> if I get this thing any wetter, it's not going to fit. This is my brand new d and &E in the Garage Christmas sweater. We're supporting Christmas, we're supporting Jeeps, and we're supporting d and &E in the Garage. So if you haven't already, go check out their channel. Like and subscribe to them. Great Jeep content. Um, very informative, very entertaining. So that's a wrap for me, guys. Remember to like, remember to subscribe. Um, I will catch you on the next project. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and peace on Earth, goodwill to men.